Okay, so I've got two of these I'm going to cut out now. I'm using the sharpest scissors I have. And because I've already added that 5 eighths, I can um, just cut straight on that line. All right, so this is the interior for one of my large masks. I love this math print uh, fabric. Math and I are not friends, but that doesn't mean I don't like the fabric because I think it's pretty rocking. Okay, so I do have lines on here from that heat erase, so I'm going to hit it with the iron, remove those lines, and I can see where I also have some lines here from the heat erase. Remove those lines. And this is ready to put together um, pretty much at the sewing machine. I do need to cut my elastic. I need, to, I need to thread up my sewing machine. And weirdly, I had ordered some Guterman, um, non-sponsored and not affiliated, but some Guterman um, polyester, just plain white polyester thread that I believe is going to be delivered today. Um, I will probably go ahead and try to put a few of these together with the thread that I have, but I've done so much sewing um, in the last two, three months that um, I'm basically out of, of thread that I could use for this. I have heirloom type thread. Um, I have my 50 weight cotton that this that I would not use for this project it's not going to be strong enough it's a it's a wonderful wonderful product um, it's a DMC 50 weight 100% cotton thread that I used to sell in my shop for strictly for heirloom sewing but um, again these fabrics um, and under the conditions that these will be used worn washed worn washed this thread is not appropriate. Um, and then I have some other Guterman thread that is a very specific color. And I have that I, you know, I, I suppose I could use it. The problem is I would personally, personally, I would feel like I needed to wind up my bobbins in the same color. And as you can see, I have one wound up of this. Um, and then all the rest of my bobbins are already wound. And I don't want to rewind a whole bunch of bobbins. So I have a couple of bobbins that I could just, I love to say that word, bobbins. Bobbins, it's a great word. <laughs> oh, okay, bobbins, I love it. Anyway, um, it was, okay, I'm having one of those funny moments where Bobbins is just about to knock me out of my chair. In any case, I would have to do that for every color, and I don't have enough of this color to do all of these projects. So my plan is to use the white thread, excuse the noise, that I ordered because it is on a spool about this big. Why not just use this thread, you're thinking. Well, this thread is a very specific waxed bead thread um, and would not work. It's primarily used for hand beading and I wouldn't run this through my sewing machine um, even though it's a nice uh, size A, 900 yards, um, silamide, it's it's just not appropriate and I'm not running it through my sewing machine so it doesn't even go in the same drawer with the rest of my sewing thread because I'm terrified I'll just reach in and grab it I think I would know I could tell but I don't want to make that mistake um, worst case scenario I have a 
full. Um, this isn't it, but I do have a full. Uh, I'm reaching around behind me. I apologize. Uh, spool of all-purpose thread in here somewhere. I think this is it. Oh my gosh. Is this all-purpose? Yes. And it is pretty much full. So I could use this. Um, it's a dual duty, which means that it is a um, polyester cotton and um, I think it's mercerized. Is this a mercerized? It's 300 yards. Oh, it's been so long since I've used a Coats and Clark product. I can't even remember. Yes, 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 yes. This is a mercerized cotton polyester. What that means is, is that there is a strand, and I think it's the cotton. So if you can visualize this, it is, yes, it's the cotton. So just on the back of this pattern piece. So you have a strand of thread. It's just a single strand of thread. And then along comes the polyester and it winds itself around real tightly. Obviously this is a pathetic representation, but that's what that means. So the entire thing is a strand of, of cotton that has been wrapped in a strand of polyester. And if you run your fingers kind of tight, squeeze it, you can feel, you can really feel almost, it's like a little spring wrapped around something. That's what makes it an all-purpose thread. Um, it won't shrink. So if you use a cotton um, fabric and you, sorry, I'm watching somebody drive around my neighborhood. We all should be vigilant. Anyway, um, if you, let's say that we're going to sew something with cotton and we don't have any cotton thread, uh, this, if you, choose to use this thread it won't shrink so you let's pretend like you have this cotton this gorgeous print fabric and you didn't pre-wash it and you made a little dress for your, your daughter your granddaughter your niece whatever um and then you used this thread which would be weird because it's kind of a strange color but not too bad um and then you wash this dress. The thread isn't going to shrink. The dress probably will. That could cause a problem and it generally does on buttonholes and areas where you have really tight stitching like a placket or um, around a neck where there's like a curve. You're going to get some kind of weird wonkiness but it's not going to be awful. The worst is when you have a 100% piece of polyester fabric and you use cotton thread and then you wash it and your thread shrinks. Oh, I know you can only imagine the puckering that would happen. Okay, here comes that person again. You come, you come to this house, you will be sorry. Okay, I think we're safe. So anyway, my point in going down that path is I'm waiting on the white thread because I think if I'm going to do this project, I'd rather use, just load up my bobbin, get it all set up, and, and then just maybe have two or three ready to go and I can just wing these guys out. Um, I currently have a very expensive variegated thread in my sewing machine and I don't want to... Um, use it for this project because one, not that I don't want to share my expensive thread, but I don't have enough of it to do all of them. And um, two, I have a project waiting in the wings that I bought the thread for. So rather than using that thread up 
and then having to go ahead and use something else and then having to repurchase that thread and let me remind you thread is expensive um, I'm just gonna wait for the white thread that I that I already purchased um, for just multi-purpose sewing okay what else was I going to say I had a couple of other things I wanted to talk about in the event that you might be new to sewing um, if you have a sewing machine you might have used it and if you have a sewing machine you might have inherited it if you've inherited a sewing machine and you've never used it before I recommend that you just take a piece of fabric that is the weight of the fabric you're planning to make your masks with and some thread and do some practice stitching and that's not because you don't know how to sew that's because that sewing machine might have been sitting for a long time and kind of needs to get moving a little bit and you need to get familiar with what the stitch length is if your stitch length is really big say a four or a four and a half or a five it's not going to hold this together it needs to be around a two two point five maybe even a three wow. and your sewing machine should have numbers on it that correlate to what i just said so if you see a two a two and a half or a three three is a little bit big but for the most part it would probably work for something like this um, especially using a cotton um, and uh, you don't use as much thread just so you know if you've not sewn and you've not purchased thread you'll understand why I keep talking about thread it's kind of expensive um, I spent nine dollars on this spool of thread that's coming to my house that's one of the things that I'm kind of going on about here so um, that is a consideration and in the end, we may all end up just using what thread we have, regardless of the color, regardless of, you know, where it came from. We're just going to have to use thread to make the masks. We can't be picky, so to speak. Um, if you are buying a um, little set, a sewing set, um, one of the things that I suggest you purchase is glass head pins. Um... That's just my preference because you can iron over them and they don't melt. Glass head pins are multi-purpose. You can pin things together with them. They are typically longer than your average pin, but that's not always the case. Just like every other rule in the world out there, from grammar to, you know, driving a car. The, the rules can change, and they can change quickly. So my suggestion to you is, if you think that you might get into this sewing thing and you really like it, these pins right here are very long. And that little green ball right there is glass. Mine are green, blue, and let's see, green, blue, amber, and yellow. Or um, I'll, I'll say clear, but they're kind of a yellow color. And what that top color means is the size of the wire that they use to make the pin from. Some of these are very thin and easy to bend. The, the shaft is so thin, it's almost like a hair. What am I hearing? Oh, that must have been a fairy horn. I thought it was my phone buzzing. <laughs> what a weird day. So this, this green one is like super, super small. The wire gauge is very small. Very easy to bend and works really well with very, very lightweight fabric. 
The amber, on the other hand, is a slightly larger gauge. And then the blue is the largest. It is um, the sturdiest of all of my glass head pens. I can go through several layers of fabric with the blue. And the amber is, or the yellow, almost feels the same. There's that fairy horn again. Huh. Wow. I wonder if the reason I can hear it so clearly today is because there's no traffic. There's literally like nobody on the streets. Nobody's shopping. Nobody hanging out. Nobody doing anything. The kids are home from school. People are working from home. It's a very weird timeline. Okay, I don't know why the ferry is running. Maybe they have to bring people in or take people over to the island where they live. And by island, I mean Whidbey. Okay, so these are the pins that I'm talking about. Now I'm going to try to show you something. These are all glass, and I'm going to just put my iron right on top of the pin. I'm going to iron away. La, 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 la. They did not melt. So, that's one reason why I like the glass head pens. Now, there's another version of glass head pens. They're short, and they have a white glass um, ball on the end. They're great for um, if you are doing heirloom sewing, and you're doing uh, lace shaping, or anything having to do with that tiny little fiddly, you know, heirloomy kind of pin tucks and lace and and those kinds of things. These pins are great. They are very strong. The the wire used to make the pin part is a good sturdy gauge and the top is glass. But they're short. The reason I like the longer pins is because I can actually take a pin and do a little stitcheroo like that several times. And that really, really, really holds my fabric in place. If I need to check it to make sure that, let's say, I've got the right seam allowance because I'm making this mask, this is the wrong way. Well, I'll just do it the right way. Alright, because we're going to be stitching it down this curve like this. And let's just say I, I need to make sure that um, I'm, I'm at the right seam allowance. I can just do a fake test. Or it's not a fake test, it's just fake stitching. To check it out, I'm going to open this up. And... As you can see, it honestly looks like I've stitched. And all I've done is checked it out with my pins. And that's why I like these. The length really does make a difference. This is, by the way, non-sponsored. I'm not 100% sure. I think they're Clover. C-L-O-V-E-R. I could be wrong. They might be Coates and Clark. I can't remember. I've had them for a long time. Now, conversely... These pins are plastic headed pins. They are all the same gauged wire. They're about the same gauge as the blue. A little bit stronger, I think. There's, there's a slight difference you can see in the wire. I, th I can see it. I don't know if it'll show up on camera. The problem with them, and they only have a problem, just one, and that is that the, this is plastic. And if I forget and I come over here and I iron it with my iron, that plastic is going to melt and get all over my fabric. And then that, at least this side of my project, is, in my opinion, it would be ruined at that, at that point. It might come off, but it probably would damage the integrity of this piece of fabric in some way. The only, that's the only thing about them that I don't like. Um, I happen to like this particular brand. Um, 
I'd have to look on Amazon. I purchased them on Amazon and I can't remember what they're called, but I will try to find it and I will try to link it below if I don't forget. But my point is they're thick and I don't know if you can see it, but the plasticky part is thick. They're very colorful. So if I'm using a piece of fabric, let me get my purple one, that has a lot of color, like this guy right here, um, I will often lose my glass head pins on this type of fabric because they are rather clear. If I'm sewing, I'm more likely to forget that I have this pin in here than I am these colors here. These are visible, they're, they're big, they stand out, but these glass head pins don't. They just fade into the background. So that's something else to consider if you're looking for pins. The other thing I want to say about pins is if you have already got a set of pins and they are, you know, straight pins with, a, I don't have any, but they're just like a, a pin with a little piece of metal cap on the top, don't worry about it. Those pins will work just fine. They do tend to rust, but you're probably not going to be leaving them in your projects. The only time you're going to notice any rust is if you've got a, um, a pin cushion and you've left them in the pin cushion. And um, I don't know what it is about them. Even if you don't get them wet, they seem to just have this propensity to rust. Um, but they're still pins and they'll still work. Um, they don't melt, obviously, as long as they've just got that little metal cap. Um, you know, it'd be like pressing over the top of a sewing needle. It's not going to melt. Um, but my, that's kind of where I was going to go with the pin thing. If you need to get some pins, you might want to consider the glass head pins in the event you choose to continue sewing. So, all right, so that said, I've got two of these cut out. And um, as soon as I can get back to my sewing machine, I've got a couple things I have got to do. And the day is just racing away from me. It's Friday. Um, I'm going to try my best to get all 100 of these done. I can already tell it's not going to happen today. If you know me, you know why I'm saying that. I have been dealing with a multitude of injuries and I was just recently re-injured like three days ago and um, I am struggling to just even stand up and sit down. So for a little while, I'm going to go try to do a little bit of physical therapy myself. I know how to take care of the, the pain from the wonderful physical therapist that I did have. Um, and I'm going to try to take care of some of the pain so that when I come back to my sewing room, I can concentrate on what I'm doing and not be thinking about the, um, the pain that I'm trying not to think about. <laughs> so anyway, I, um, I appreciate every single one of my dandelions. If you've not visited my little YouTube channel before um, and you happen to like what you're seeing and you want to subscribe, I really appreciate it. It really does help. I know that my videos are not the best in the world out there, but um, I feel like the information that I can give you about sewing, baking, um, sketching, painting, creating um, is, is pretty good. I feel like it's really pretty good. So if you have any questions, check it out. Ch um, go to my Instagram, Laurie Ann Eggleston. Um, and that is L-A-U-R-I-E-A-N-N-E-G-G-L-E-S-T-O-N. You can also find me on Facebook at Laurie's Heirloom Sewing. And you can comment below, uh, right here on YouTube. If you have questions, I will certainly be as helpful as I possibly can. And um, I hope we all can get through 
this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so many lives have been lost and we need to do everything we can right now, March the 20th of 2020, to flatten it. And that really does mean we got to stay home. I'm going to give you one quick example of something I saw yesterday that really made me stop and think. Um, we all are so used to being able to talk to someone face to face that it's almost second nature. We don't even give it a second thought. Um, I was in my sewing room and I watched my um, one of my neighbors came, went out, came outside. Um, she is in charge of, and I'm couching that with, you know, quotation fingers. She's in charge of our landscaping people. And they showed up yesterday to mow, weed eat, and kind of tidy up this little strip that we have beside the sidewalk. Um, there's hardly anything to it. It's just a quick job. There aren't that many houses in this neighborhood. Um, it's the first time this year that we've had them come out, mainly because... Um, it has done nothing but rain in the state of Washington for, um, I don't know how long. Mother Nature knows I I gave up keeping up with it. Um, anyway, so they showed up like they were supposed to. And they're mowing and they're weed eating. And the guy with the leaf blower is taking care of, you know, the debris. And um, so here she goes. And she literally runs outside right up to this guy who has a leaf blower. She's not six feet away from him. She's not six inches away from him. She is literally in his face. Now, I know for a fact that she doesn't know him. She doesn't know... She probably doesn't know his name. She doesn't know anything about him. She doesn't know if he went to the 7-Eleven and bought a coffee and used his debit card and touched the keypad at the 7-Eleven that had just previously been touched by somebody who is a caregiver for a person who has this disease. We, we don't know, right? She has no idea who that person has been in touch with that person has no idea who he has come in contact with who might have been exposed to a virus that has now been proven to live on objects for many hours, maybe an entire day. It can live on the surface of anything out in the world. Whether that's proved or disproved, why take a chance? So anyway, so she's out there. So it occurs to me that she isn't aware that this self-isolation that we've been allowed to do, you know, we're not under, um, you know, a, a statewide quarantine where we're not allowed to go outside for anything. We might end up being, but currently it's called self-isolation, and we're not supposed to be, you know, interacting with people that we don't know. Um, but she just exposed herself. So the 15 days that she was supposed to be in self-isolation started over again yesterday. And I just noticed that they're, they're not taking this seriously. So to flatten this and to stop it, to stop the spread, we seriously have to take it seriously. We can't say to ourselves, oh, it'll be okay just this once if I go outside and talk to this person. Six, less than six inches away from his or her face. Um, but that's the whole point of this, and that's the whole point of doing everything we can. I mean, we have celebrities who are literally staying at home, doing everything they can to help flatten COVID-19. And I do hope that it helps. And I hope that you, my dandelions, are safe and healthy and are able to do these projects. And if not, 
and you want to and you need help trying to figure it out, don't hesitate to reach out either to me or somebody else online who sews that you follow. Um, but like I was saying, if you happen to like the content, please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, and I will try to keep the videos coming. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.